What's up, everybody? Thanks for checking in with Cali. Please like, subscribe if you haven't. You know, after looking at the Clippers game, you know, I talked about the plus minus situation that the Clippers had where everybody seemed like the, the everybody in the starting lineup seemed like they was in the in the plus, not in the negative, in the plus minus category. Being up by 36 points in a game, I don't think nobody in the world is really doing much wrong. Even though you might not be scoring as well, you're still assisting and contributing to other people's scoring. So it's like it still helps in the plus minus category. And I feel like all the Clippers pretty much did well in that category, being up by 36 points in Boston on, on, a, on a road game like that. That says a lot about the team and where – they're going and what their direction is and what their goal is, you know, so that's definitely a plus all on its own. But to me, you know, a lot of people might not be looking at it, how the Clippers, you know, they went and stole a, a secret weapon that nobody really talks about. And the secret weapon I'm talking about is Daniel Tice. Daniel Tice is he played for the Celtics and, you know, in a recent post, he said he was talking about he was thinking about rejoining the uh, Celtics before, you know, going to the Clippers. And with that being said, you know, it's it's like think about it like this. If the Celtics had Daniel Tice that night playing against the Clippers, they might not have been down by 36 points. They might only have been down by 15 points because his 18 big points that he gave the Clippers was a big uplifting for them because, you know, James Harden didn't play that well. Russ didn't play that well that game. I think James Harden had about, you know, six to eight points. He was like 0 for 6 from 3. Um, you know, Russ didn't, you know, put up that many, you know, numbers as he did a few nights before that. But I'm just saying, like, when you have somebody like that who nobody really thinks about as being a secret weapon, who, uh, people look at as like the who is the third backup center or the second backup center to Zubac you know between him and uh Mason Plumley, and he can go out there and drop 18 big points like that hit a couple of threes from the perimeter uh stretch the floor play hard as hell play tough and um, play rugged um, defensively and grab uh, extra rebounds, offensive rebounds, and, you know, kick the ball out and get the offense going and, you know, everybody feeds off everyone's energy like that, that's a huge plus for the Clippers because, hypothetically, if one of their other big men went down like Mason Plumley did for about two months and where they had to go out and get Daniel Tice – um, or Zubac goes down the way he is now, Daniel Tice is stepping in and playing a role that Zubac can't. Zubac can't step out in the perimeter and score like that. Daniel Tice can. You see what I'm saying? So he gives them a different dynamic in the five position where a lot of people are not looking at how how deadly the Clippers are like all around, whereas before they were really only deadly in two areas, which is Kawhi and PG, and both of them pretty much play the same position. It's just one plays a small forward and the other one plays the power forward, depending upon the matchup of whoever they're playing that night. But I mean, now that they have depth in other areas where they don't really have to rely on Kawhi and PG so much, it makes their life so much easier. Whereas, like I said, Kawhi and PG barely even played the fourth quarter, you know, of the Celtics game, you know, and in the game prior to that as well. So it's like they're they're having nights where they're kind of like e taking it easy, resting a little bit, not over, not using too much uh, energy, over expending a lot of energy. They're go they're going out there. They're playing within their means. They're playing their structured game plan and they go at teams that way. And, you know, they they have so much depth all the way around. It doesn't really affect them too much. You know, in regards to what other teams are doing, because they have a game plan. They they have a reactive game plan that other teams don't. Like I said, if Kawhi and PG struggle, just like they did a few nights ago against the Nets. I mean, now Kawhi caught fire at the end, you know, in the fourth quarter and shut the game down. That's that's what, you know, MVP caliber players do the night before that. A couple nights before that, uh, Paul George caught fire and they, they, they end up winning a game. So it's like whether, you know, at some point, usually Kawhi and PG are going to figure it out. They usually are going to, you know, snap out of it and catch fire. But if they don't, look at the other pieces they have around them, not only just Harden and, and um, Russell Westbrook. You got somebody like Daniel Tice who can go in there and drop about, you know, 18, 20 points and really get the offense going. And then the way Terrence Mann has been shooting as of late, you know, definitely his confidence is up there as far as shooting from the perimeter and things like that. That goes a long way. And then when you have those type guys who can have that spark, it definitely makes your team a lot more formidable going forward. And we can't forget about Norman Powell. He can come off the bench and drop 20, 25 points at any time himself. So it's like they have guys off the bench who will come in and contribute. Um, they got guys within the starting lineup. They got 
three, they got two backup centers to Zubak that might actually be better than Zubak in some way, form, or fashion. You know what I'm saying? Because Mason Plumley gets more offensive rebounds than Zubak does. He 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 just thrives in that area. Plus, he can push the ball almost like a point guard and make good passes underratedly as a big man. And then you look at Daniel Tice, what Zubak and Mason Plumley don't have that he does. He can shoot from the perimeter. He can knock down two out of five from the three-point line if given the opportunity. He can do that. He has the capability of doing that. And he's a, he's a tough guy, and he plays with grit as well, So just like Mason Plumley and Zubak. So all three of their big men kind of present challenges that each one of them don't have. So like I said, Zubak is more banger in the paint than the other two big men. Tice can shoot from the perimeter and Mason Plumley can push the ball like a point guard at times off or off the rebound. And, you know, he, he's very tough himself. And like I said, he gets more he gets those extra offensive rebounds, those extra possessions for the Clippers. That really makes a difference. The little things at times that people don't pay attention to. So, I mean, they have like three. They, it's like they, they have a three headed monster there that nobody really looks at, which really makes them a lot more dangerous outside of Kawhi, PG and Harden and Russ. So, I mean, like I said, Daniel Tice to me is one of their secret weapons because they can plug him in and he can give the he can he can give them a, 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 a extra shooter on the floor, sort of say. I mean, now if you plug them in the starting lineup, now they got all shooters on the floor. They got their host. Like if you have James Harden, um, Terrence Mann, Kawhi, PG and Daniel Tice, all five players can shoot threes. All five of them can knock down threes. So that tells you like, wow, like, OK, they are really a juggernaut when you when your big man can step out there and knock down threes like that, along with the other four players I just named on the floor in the starting lineup, teams are going to have a problem. And then, like I said, Norm Powell's coming off the bench. He's coming in there to shoot. He's coming in there to kill something. If they decide to use Bones Highland, he can go out there and score. Um, Russell Westbrook is coming off the bench to give the energy. He can score still. I mean, you, you're you're. And then, like I said, they even got guys on the bench they don't use that can still be effective, almost like 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 a PJ Tucker. So I mean, it's like you know when you look at that and Brandon Boston and those guys. Man, I tell you, it's 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 tough for a lot of teams to play them, and I don't think nobody really would want to play them in a seven game series, based upon everything they're seeing with this team so far and how they're built, and you know, just just them being a, a team that's a rock, you know, right now. And like I said, teams get the best of them sometimes, of course, and during the regular season because it's the regular season, it's eighty two games, it's a long season, but in a seven game series, I mean, somebody like Daniel Tice really was going to come up big for them because he's going to present challenges that other teams are not really going to be paying attention attention to they're going to pay attention to the big four norman powell and uh, pretty much that's it you know what i'm saying that's where teams look at but like i said you have zubak in the paint getting his off of the pick and roll with james harden that's 10 to 12 points that teams they might account for but they're not going to account for what daniel tice does if when he if he decides to if when tyloo decides to throw him in there because he's not really factored into the game plan like that because you just don't know the clippers might use him as a decoy they might use him as somewhat of a scorer from the perimeter you never know what they're going to do and then like i said you got to hope PG or Kawhi is not on because if they are, that's a problem on its own. If James Harden is knocking down three, well, that presents the problem to be even more. And then if Russell Westbrook comes in there with a lot of energy and playing defense and really going at people, man, you got a real problem. So like I said, you know, the Clippers... They got they 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 really picked up a really valuable piece in Daniel Tice that I think that really completes them a lot more than what people might even want to give them credit for. 